That's my problem, size. <laughs> we can talk now? It's Kevin Slow Jam and James and Lonzo Williams World Class Record Crew. <laughs> World Lonzo class Williams World Class Wrecking Crew. Yeah, trying to, trying to Lonzo get, get, get Williams. And this is really such an honor for me because this reminds me of my mom. So I'm going to tell a quick story. I'll remind you, your mom. <laughs> <laughs> so when I uh, would visit my mom in Philadelphia, okay. she knew what I would do, my itinerary. Go okay. to Pat's Steak, get a cheesesteak. Go to Gino's, get a sausage sandwich, then okay. go shopping for music. Okay. I go to my favorite store in Center City, Philadelphia. And the guy says, hey, I have this record. I don't know what to do with it. Uh, it's a 12-inch uh, group called the World Class Wrecking Crew. Turn off the lights. Um, People are not buying it, so I'm just going to give that to you. You know, if you can use it, go ahead. If not, just throw it away. Said, okay. I said, I have a saying, if it's free, it's for me. Okay. I took it. I go home, and that's when I was in D.C., WKYS. And I went, I like this song. So I started playing it. And... Not surprisingly to me, people loved it. I just thought about something, Kevin. You said D.C. You changed up on me, man. You said D.C. All right? Now, I, I, I remember this shit now. It just came to me. I'm going to tell, tell you something. I'm going to tell mine. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> so uh, I take the record. People loved it. And eventually, I moved to uh, Los Angeles to pursue voiceover and not do radio anymore. Okay. Whole long story, I ended up on the radio at 92.3 The Beat, and I said, I'm playing this, and I played it. And even though being a West Coast group, you know, I guess, I don't know if you got a lot of play. And one more little thing, I talked to Greg Mack recently, and he said, that he played it back in the day because he was really the first rap DJ, Greg Mack. And I said, and you played World Class Record Crew? He goes, yeah. I said, when? I said, uh, I started playing in, I think, 1983. or I think I'm correct. Uh, 80, uh, huh? Turn off Life came out in 87. Okay. Yeah. You know because it's you. But I uh, love it with 80, oh, the, well, the, see, we didn't make records in 83 yet. If we hadn't started making records yet. Okay, so anyway, um, Greg and I kind of checked our dates and everything, and uh, we came to an agreement. It's a tie. Okay. Who played it first? I dig this right here. Uh, we were so hot in D.C. Back at that time, the two hottest records on the radio was Doing the Butt, by EU. EU. And World Class Wrecking Crew turn off the lights. We had ran into EU on the road. They said, hey man, we're doing an uh, event uh, at this stadium, a homecoming thing. We want y'all to come uh, be, on the, be on the bill with us. So cool, it's EU, so we good. Now, this is our first, my first time in DC. My, one of my first gigs doing turn off the lights. So my uh, publicist, says, Lonzo, on your so part of your song, you might want to pull off your pants because you said like a metal exotic dancer, you'll dance with a G-string on your hip. Put a G-string on and drop your pants. And I'm like, fuck that, okay? <laughs> but she kept, she stayed on me. She stayed on me. Then my boys in the group, hey, man, that'd be a good idea, man. Drop your pants. So she bought me some goddamn G-strings, okay? I said, I ain't going to drop my pants. Fuck that. Get to the show, I put the G-string on anyway. I ain't gonna drop my pants. <laughs> and uh, man, they hit you. Here's the crazy part. Because we had two gigs in one night. 
we had we was in D.C. and we had to be in Virginia to close in Virginia. So we opened in D.C. We came on the radio in D.C. and told them, hey, a world class wrecking crew will be live. We're going on first. If you want to see us perform, turn off the lights, you got to be there early. OK, so, man, we get to D.C. and the stadium was damn near full. OK, it was a nice ass crowd for an early crowd. I got a little ritual. I, I to kill my nerves. I'd get me a shot of tequila and a shot of, and a uh, couple of swallows of Corona. That's my thing. Oh, Boiler maker. There you drop, go. drop that right quick. Give me about five minutes to get digested. I'm ready to go. I hit the stage. We do surgery. We do juice. We do cabbage patch. And all of a sudden, the uh, the doom drop. Turn off the lights. My chest swole up. I'm like, fuck, I'm gonna drop my <laughs> pants. My shit coming around. I'm doing my shit right. I'm doing my shit. I said, drop, drop my pants out on some baggy pants, like almost like hammer pants, big pants. Yeah. I dropped my pants and threw my hands up. Every girl in goddamn D.C. screaming like a motherfucker, right? They screaming their ass off. My head just swole up, okay? My head swole up so big, my Jericho didn't fit no more. All right? <laughs> this shit was crazy. They, I mean, it was, you could feel the energy, right? Now, I pull up my pants. Because we got another show, we, got to, we have to be out, get off the stage real fast, right? So they brought the limousine into the stadium right there by the stage so we can hop in because we didn't have time to go through traffic. We had to go to the airport to get a plane to go to D.C. But in the parking lot, they had a helicopter waiting for us, okay? So I had to drop my pants in D.C., limousine waiting for us on the side of the goddamn stage. My partner came, threw my maxi coat around my arm like James Brown. Oh, it was some shit, okay? <laughs> I'm waving like a motherfucker. I'm waving my head. Is, uh, you can't tell me shit. I get to the parking lot. It's the helicopter waiting for us. They done took most of the crew already because it's just a little hop, skip, and a jump. Like from LAX to like from the forum to LAX. It's real quick. So they came back to get me and uh, me, Mona. And I think it might have been Battle Cat. Battle Cat was with us this time. And man, I'm in the parking lot signing the autograph. The helicopter is <laughs> Jerry Curl is just like that motherfucker luxury is right, luxurious. It's flipping in the air and shit. We get on the helicopter, I'm waving, put the headphones on, get to the airport. They put us on a little crop dusting plane, right? A little small motherfucker. Small, yeah. one of them Ricky, Ricky Nelson type shits, okay? I'm scared of the motherfucker. Scaring. We get to Virginia, and we closing the show. Heavy D and the Boy was open. Heavy D and the Boys was there. Uh, I think uh, UTFO, some other folks in New York were there. We were the closers. I get to the show. The promoter playing with my money. So we ain't going on till I get my money. So now time is passing. People getting a little antsy outside. Okay? okay. People getting a little pissed. So we hit the stage. Boom, turn up. We do surgery juice. Motherfuckers is not feeling surgery and juice today. Fuck, you niggas is late. We ain't fucking with y'all right now, right? So we drop, turn off the lights. Everybody go crazy. Most of them. Most of them go crazy. The girls are loving it. The dudes ain't liking it at all, okay? <laughs> so I'm standing on stage. For the first time in my life, motherfuckers ain't feeling me, okay? So they start throwing little shit. Oh Pennies and ice and little dumb shit, right? So we drop, turn off the lights. Everybody cool down. But motherfuckers in the front row, they still doing little bullshit, right? So I'm kind of doing my dance and ducking. <laughs> doing my dance and ducking, right? So I dropped my pants in, in uh, Virginia. Shit goes over well, except for these motherfuckers in the front row. So I put, I'm, everybody, everything is cool. I wave, time to go, pull my pants up. As I'm walking off the stage, this is honest to God truth, so help me God. As I'm walking off the stage, I feel something pulling at me, biting me at my thighs, right? Like, God damn, what the fuck is this shit? And so I'm walking off the stage, and I'm feeling this shit just like this is this, this, this Fucking my thighs up. What the fuck? So I'm, I'm walking off the stage, going to the dressing room. I pull my pants down. I don't see nothing. So I'm walking some more. I'm, oh, shit. What the fuck? My manager said, what's going on, man? I said, I don't know what's happening, man. Something is biting me on my motherfucking balls. He says, go in the bathroom. He go in the bathroom. I lift up my nuts. It's a, it's a big-ass bottle of Hubba Bubba gum. 
between my thigh and my motherfucking nuts, ripping my motherfucking hair out like a goddamn pavilion wax, tearing my motherfucking ass up. I said, honest to God, truth. So that's why I don't, that's why I don't have a big head. Because as big as my head was in DC, I wasn't shit. I was just a nigga with gum on his nuts in Virginia. True story. Bubble gum on your nuts. Bubble gum on my nuts. There's your next song. <laughs> I've got bubble, bubble gum, gum on, my nuts. on my nuts, and I'm in a rut. <laughs> That's a true fucking story, man. Now, there's a story you've That's told true. before. I've told it before. Yeah. But when you said D.C., that because I only played D.C. one time, and that was when we played D.C. That was my, one of the first shows we ever did turn off the lights outside of California. So I'm going to have to get that to you. So was that at a, a stadium or big ass? A, a not, big not, ass. Not Anacostia Park. I, mean, I couldn't tell you if you whooped my ass. I don't know, but it was a, it was an indoor like the form. It was a big like a basketball stadium. It was okay. It was it was, it was indoors then. Yes, indoors. Yes, yes, it was indoors. But yeah, it was uh, probably the highlight of my career and probably one of the most uh, earth uh, bringing back bring your ass back down to earth uh, moves too as soon as I went up it was a highlight and a low light highlight and a low light same day low four hour period (laughs) that's down to God truth oh my god that's what keeps me grounded got bubble gum on my nuts we all need something to ground us that keeps me grounded and that's a classic that's a true story dude that might be a good ass song Bubble gum, yeah. bubble gum. Bubble gum on my nuts. Better than my asshole is brown. And then people say, pink. where did you come up with that idea? True story. Bubble gum on my nuts. That's, that's good, <laughs> that might be a good ass conversation piece. Bubble gum. Hubba Bubba. It was actually Hubba Bubba. Was, oh my God. I wonder if I get an endorsement that's for that. That's what they use in baseball. Hubba double bubble. bubble. The, that's, all the baseball players chew double bubble. I, I, I just was Hubba Bubba. This is, this is sweet, that sweet shit. That's why I was so sticky. It was just snatch it. It was big ass. Man, we had to, I had to cut my nuts. <laughs> oh, that's like you get bubble gum. I had to shave my nuts, man. It was fucked up. Bubble gum in your hair is the worst. It, it was hair. Okay, same shit. I think sometimes they say peanut butter. I didn't have no peanut butter backstage. We but they razor, did. They did suggest peanut butter, right? Yeah, but we we was backstage, so all we had well, all we had was razor blades because folks shaved. So well, there's another had, song, peanut butter on my nuts. I had to shave one of my. I had to shave all the shit off my nuts so I can walk out the goddamn marina. True fucking story, man. Wow. So that's not a highlight. That's a low light. That was a low light. <laughs> Getting that gum off my nut was a <laughs> my nuts was a highlight though. <laughs> <laughs> that's no bullshit. So Butch Cassidy is going to be here in a minute. Do you know who Butch Cassidy is? I've heard of him. I'm not familiar. I'm not, I don't think we ever met, though. Um, he's going to be here. So Butch Cassidy. Um, Snoop was listening to me on the radio when I was at uh, 92.3 The Beat, and he heard me play this song called You Tonight. Snoop called me, and I was getting ready to put my headphones away, getting ready to go out of the studio. It was 5 o'clock in the morning. He goes, what did you just play? I said, that was uh, Danny Butch Means. Uh, you tonight. He goes, I need to talk to that man. So I hooked that up the next day. Right. Turns out Butch Cassidy was cousins was cousin of Nate Dogg. Mm. I love Nate Dogg. Um, Good one. In fact, he's the only person I ever shared my music library with, right. Nate Dogg, because I, I admired him so much, and he was so nice to me. And uh, we were, uh, or he was performing at Summer Jam, and I remember going to his trailer. I gave him a copy of all my my songs I played, which is like giving up a. Uh, the recipe for KFC. I, here's my recipe. Okay. But that's how much I admired him. And then I ended up being on his, uh, I do these little skits. So I'm on his song called Dirty Hose Draws. Okay. And uh, I think I might be in, a, am I on another track, Prime? With uh, Nate Dog, but one of my favorites. But I just want to, Reemphasize what an honor it is to speak to you. Hey, Be- here, Doc. Because you're the beginning of rap. West Coast, yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah, West Coast. Yeah. West Coast. I, I but, can't claim nothing else for West Coast. Not that people love the term gangster rap, but it's West Coast rap. We was pre-gangster. Pre, yeah. I was pre-gangster. We were still dancing and had on hard soul shoes and jerry curls and shit. Yeah. I was pre-gangster rap. Uh, half were, the NWA came out of world-class wrecking crew. Were you played on the East Coast in the beginning? Oh, hell yeah. And, and that was the difference, man. That was one thing that set us apart from everybody else, dude. Uh, I never forget, we were, um, I was in business with some other folks, Egyptian Lover, and he had did a show at the Apollo Theater. And the Op Apollo had this thing they were doing, it was like a West Coast run. And he went down there a week before we were due to come down there. He called back to the studio, to the office, man, it's a rough crowd, man, it's a rough crowd, dude. They're going to boo y'all, they're going to do all kind of shit. And I, shit, I. Okay, well, that's what. Let's see what happens. <laughs> yeah. So I go down there with my uh, goddamn uh, my tequila and my Corona. Corona. There you go. And my G-string. I didn't. I didn't get <laughs> your booed. three. Your three best friends. I didn't get booed. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, woo, 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 woo. I didn't get booed. Left that seven gun with a friend. You got wooed, not booed. We got wooed. We didn't get booed. Okay. <laughs> so I can't speak for nobody else. I can speak for me. My experience in New York. We got treated like kings. We stayed in uh, we stayed on Park Avenue in a uh, in, in Helmsley Palace, treated like kings, limousines everywhere we went, and I ain't had no problem. So it's all how you how you present yourself. Yeah, you can walk out there in the G string, you all right. <laughs> I'm here to tell you, that's not going to happen with me. All right, <laughs> because yeah. people would definitely boo. They go no. You know, it'd be like a stripper, you know, take it off, take it off. Put it on, put, be, it, be, on. Be, be, put it on, put it on. <laughs> <laughs> now, we had, I had a lot of fun. I've always had fun uh, being on the road. I mean, that's, that was the fun part about being with a world-class wrecking crew. We never had any issues. You know, we didn't have security. We, our, security our security was cock-blocking. <laughs> Get the fuck out of the way, man. You, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> so tell us all the members of the world-class wrecking crew. Uh, original members, myself, Lonzo. DJ Yella, Dr. Dre, and Clientele. After the first album, Clientele left, and he was, he was replaced with Shakespeare. Shakespeare, okay, yeah. yeah. Shakespeare was on Turn Off the Lights. And, and, and he's on Turn Off the Lights, yeah. Yep. yep. And the song, Lovers, that's the one that kills me because Dr. Dre sounds so young. Yep, that's the one that got us most, that got us the most airplay before Turn Off the Lights. Huh. We were talking about this song last night. Uh, both though, originally, Turn Off Lovers was influenced by LL Cool J. Oh. LL was the first person I ever heard to do a slow song. I Need Love. Yeah. And uh, we was coming back from Oakland. I was telling the story last night on my podcast. And uh, we was coming back from Oakland, and we heard I Need Love by LL Cool J. I said, we ought to do a slow song. Oh man, we can't do no slow song. We can't sing. <laughs> so I wouldn't grab fucking float on by the floaters. We're gonna do it like this right here. Oh shit, we're gonna put a girl in the middle. Oh shit. Okay. And we did it and it worked. And that was our biggest song up until we did turn off the lights. And and we right before we broke up, uh, I wanted to do another song. Everybody wanted to be gangsters all of a sudden. I said, I'm I'm not a gangster. I done done some gangster shit, but I'm not a gangster. <laughs> And uh, so I decided to go on and do, a, uh, do Turn Off the Lights. And uh, it was funny, man, because when I did it, I was out dropping some records off at the uh, Long Beach Swap Meet, Compton Swap Meet on Long Beach Boulevard. And uh, I came out, and this chicken, it, talking about reality rap, Turn Off the Lights was a reality rap because somebody actually said that to me. This chick I was kicking him with, if you're going to fuck with me, you better do it right. I don't play blah, 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 blah. So I just took it and flipped it and turned it into a song, just like you said, with the peanut butter on your nuts, right? Yeah. I'm going to flip that, too. <laughs> <laughs> I think so, that, that one will stick. Uh, yeah, peanut yes, butter yes, stick. Yes, okay, yes. go ahead. You, you ain't slick. I caught that one. Okay. Oh, you did catch that. Okay. I caught that one. So uh, I'm in the swap meet parking lot, man, and it just all this, the whole thing just hit me. It was almost like I got sick. And I started writing lyrics, man. I, I took out an album. I, had a, I was dropping off records. I opened up one of them, that little white uh, sleeve that's on the, all the records. Yeah. I wrote everybody's I wrote everybody's part right there in this Compton Swap Me parking lot. 
mine, Dre's, Yellow's, because nobody wanted to do the song. They'd all swell up, wanted to be gangsters by that time. And I'm like, nah, we're going to do one more song before we get out of here. When y'all leave, we do one more song. And, uh, you know, nobody knew it was going to be a hit. It's just something I wanted to do. Dre had been playing with the beat already. So I do the song, the original song he did, he, 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 got, he kind of lifted the beat from. So it worked for us, man. It, you know, that was our farewell song. And they had the nerve to say, I knew it was going to be a hit. That's why I broke up with them. Get the fuck out of here with that bullshit. <laughs> anyway. That's where, where did you find Michelet? Man, I found Michelet. Somebody brought me Michelet. I was, we had, this was, we had just got off the tour. And I came over the Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening. Just come from LAX. My phone rang at my house. I still had a house phone. It was my boy, uh, Smooth. I got this girl, man. You got to meet this girl. Man, I ain't got time to meet her, but I got a date. It was a long tour. I ain't have no luck on the road. I got to go see my, see my people. Oh, man, please, please, man. Just five minutes, five minutes. I'm right around the corner, right around the corner. So he brought her around the studio, and uh, first she didn't want to sing, and then she finally turned her back, and she started singing. I thought she had a tape recorder or something by her chest or something because she was blowing her ass off. <laughs> and I got up, walked in front of her, and she still was doing it down, you know, throwing down. And uh, then she got comfortable with me. She just started wailing. I'm like, God damn. And then I asked her some questions. And everything changed. Hey, 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 what the fuck happened? He dropped his head and said, man, that's what's wrong. I said, that ain't, ain't, ain't nothing wrong with that. It's amazing. Ain't nothing wrong with it. And I got her number. And I held on to it for about a year. It wasn't, contrary to all the documentaries you've seen, it wasn't no shit. I just went grabbed her two days later. Now, it was about a year later. I was working on Turn Off the Lights. Because at that time, when I met her, we were still riding high for lovers. Yeah. We, still was, we still was rocking off of lovers, juice, and surgery. We still was kicking ass with that shit. So uh, about a year later, we was, I was going, got ready to record Turn Off the Lights. And my regular girl, Mona, was not available. And uh, I called Michelet, she answered the phone, and uh, the rest is history. She was so great on that song. Yeah. That was the first time in the studio. And then she became solo with uh, Something in My Heart yep. and other stuff like that. Yep. Um, she was supposed to be the Mary J. Blige of the West Coast. But shit happens. Life, life start lifing. Put it like that. Life started life. You still talk to her? I, I see her. I haven't talked to her in a while. Not to be disrespectful, but when you talk to her, she sounds like Minnie Mouse. Yeah, she does. <laughs> yeah. If you, she then, to... then she starts singing, and you go like, oh, my God. What the fuck, who the fuck is that? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That voice came from that? Yeah. She's a little tiny thing. She's only like 5'1", five 5'2". Five yeah. If that. So, yeah, it's, it's a lot of voice for a small package. Wow. I, I always understood, I never understood how <laughs> easy to discover Michelet. How do you discover on my record? <laughs> how the fuck that happened? I, it, she was already on the hit record when you heard her the first time. It wasn't like you discovered nobody. But, I, you know, I ain't mad at nobody. Like, I, I, I like keeping the record straight. Yep. I like keeping the record straight. She was on turn on crew cut before she's any place else. But I didn't. I never signed her. That was one thing. I never signed her. She was just work for hire on that particular song right there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Maybe that's the difference. I don't know. This is fascinating. Thank you, Dad. Is there anything new that you told us that's not in the documentary? Uh, not really. Not really. Well, give uh, me something. Give me a tidbit like. Nobody knows. Uh, shit. I did, talk, I did so many interviews. Everybody know pretty much everything. They got to put it all together now. That's all. Okay. But it's, it's a. It's, I was trying to squeeze something really secret it, out of you. You know what? Uh, being in this game for forty plus years, it's a lot of stuff that sometimes people, some people, some interviews will jar my my memory and make me recall. So it's like you said, DC. Yeah, that made me realize that DC, that DC event. Not that I forget, not that I have Alzheimer's or something. It's just I got so much shit. Sometimes when you ring a bell, you gonna get a different note. <laughs> like EU, mm -hmm. uh, their album came out, 
uh, doing the butt, whatever it was. Right. But there was a, a slow song on that album. I didn't know that. Yeah, called Taste of Your Love. Okay. I start, uh, started playing it, and then they call me, and they go like, oh, my God, you're playing A Taste of Your Love. I go, yeah. I said, I'm a slow jam DJ, so I'm not playing the butt, but the station is. <laughs> that became a hit. Yeah, okay. Taste your load. Yeah, look that up. I will. I definitely will. EU. Let me t ask the guys here. What does EU stand for? See? I have no idea myself. What does it stand for? Experience Unlimited. Okay. See, I knew something. We, we, learned, we all learned something. <laughs> okay. So we're going to... Uh, can't hear you. How, how did you know about me? Oh, I just did the radio all the time, dude. The, the beat was the shit. I, man, look, I got a couple. Of, I got a couple of kids fucking with you. <laughs> That's one thing I've heard the most. I got a couple so, of kids so, fucking so, with you. I think I have to pay a lot of alimony. You lucky? For... Yeah, give me a, re, a reimbursement or something. No, the one thing about your music, man, it was always good to put it because I was a bachelor doing it during the time you was on the radio. So I don't. I just put it on, put put you on the radio and let you do your thing, and uh, I shit break out the G string and I'm good to go. <laughs> the G string. <laughs> okay, let me erase that image first. Okay, okay, I'm cool now. Yeah, that shit worked at the house too. <laughs> so now you know I work for Snoop Dogg's Cadillac Music. Okay, that's uh, on an app called Lit Live. Okay. So I'm on six nights a week. Okay. Every night but uh, Saturday. And uh, it's called uh, The Original Slow Jam. I'm doing a promo for me, by the way. Okay. Snoop Dogg's Cadillac Music. The app is lit live. Okay. That's cool. I did not know that. I would look it up. I would download it. Okay. Okay. And if you don't, I'll just grab your phone and put it on there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> And this is great. So we're waiting on Butch Cassidy. He might miss me today because I got to be in, in Compton in a few minutes. I got some oh, okay. Chamber of Commerce business to handle. Oh, okay. That's we we don't need him for the interview because uh, he's here to record a song. I okay. I write poems. Okay. And then I try to convert them, and I did one called "Giving Up My Pimp Cane." Okay. And made that into a song. Now my new song, which is called Sidecar or something like that. What is it? What am I calling my new song? Hmm? That's not what I'm going to call it. We'll come up with a new name. So I write poems and make them into songs. Is that something that's done or is it? That's how I started writing songs myself back in high school. I had a poetry class and a writing class. So same thing. Same poetry. Thing. All you got to do is time it out. Yeah. yeah. Time it out. Yes. Songs have a hooks. Go ahead. Come here. Edit it later. Um, What's that? Just have that moment to where we play with it. We play them. We oh, okay. Love or whatever you want to promote to because I know you got a podcast. He wants me to thank you. Okay, I'll do it. <laughs> well, just because he's running on time, so we want to make sure we get it. Thank you. Uh, really appreciate it. Not a problem. Thank for having me over, I've been man. looking forward to this day for a long, long time. And I do want to thank DSR Chris and Optimacy Prime for being here to fill in some of the gaps because I probably was uh, not hitting on all the subjects I wanted to talk about. Oh, we good. But this was an honor. Now, tell them again where they can find you. Man, you can find me almost, almost too, I'm too easy to find. One, you can find me on my podcast every Tuesday live, NWA Stories with Lonzo on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, all that kind of good stuff. Check out my documentary, the one with Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre and Kendrick Lamar, Mary J. Blige, 50 Cent, and Eminem. And it's called Eve After Dark on, on uh, Tubi and YouTube. My second documentary on, on, my, on my channel, the Compton Entertainment Channel, uh, Welcome to Easy Street. We just dropped that last week, and 
in film festivals right now and coming to a streaming platform near you is NWA. Not with Alonzo. Not without Alonzo coming out shortly. Right now, we, we've been kicking ass in film festivals. we got about four more to do, and we plan on releasing the first of the year on a streaming platform near you. Very well said. Thank you, sir. They can uh, find you. I'm easy to be found. Real Lonzo NWA at uh, on Is there Instagram. a picture or anything in, in the post office of you? No, but uh, I got a bat signal. I have to throw it up. Big old L every fucking Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> this has been delightful, and I can't tell you how long I've been looking forward to doing this. Not a problem. Appreciate you, Doc. Thank you. All right.